Peter Schrager, Charles Davis, Daniel Jeremiah, you DJ, you've got the first word on the first moment after the first ever draft in Vegas. Yeah, this is an incredible event. It's amazing how this just keeps getting better and better. We take the show on the road and you, you get to experience the city as well as the draft. It's been awesome. Uh, when I look at this draft and I look at teams, the one that jumps out to me, and it's not just trying to suck up to the host here. I think the New York Jets <laughs> are a major story in this draft. What they're able to get accomplished, the difference-making players that they added, starting with Sauce Gardner, Garrett Wilson, and Jermaine Johnson in the first round, and then CD to come back up and you get Brees Hall. Then you add three guys you coached and you know well at the Senior Bowl. If the Jets are going to turn the corner, this is going to be the draft that we point to. How about the Green Bay Packers? And an exercise in patience. You pointed it out on the first night because all the Packers fans and let heck all of us talked about getting receivers, but the receivers went fast. So by the time they got to Green Bay, maybe not the guys they had rated on their board, so they went with a lot of defense first. Took care of business with that with Quay Walker, linebacker from Georgia, being involved in that. Devontae Wyatt. Defensive lineman from Georgia. Then they came back later and started to get receivers and accumulate guys. Exercise in patience. They still are the team to beat in the NFC North. You know, DJ started off with the Jets. I just think New York football in general, the New York Giants and New York Jets with two top 10 picks, then loading up on days two and day three. I feel like there was a bit of a change for both those teams. So not only the Jets, the Giants to get Kayvon Thibodeau, to get Evan Neal, to roll the dice on a Wandale Robinson who can do a lot of different things. I'm very excited for New York football to be back. And I know Bills fans are saying, well, whatever, we're near. Fine. New York City market football. I think both the Jets and the Giants took major swings and they could be home runs. Um, the biggest surprise, one that makes you now that you, you look back, say if you had told me that beforehand, I wouldn't have believed it. If you'd have told me that we wouldn't have, we don't have one quarter, those, uh, wait, one quarterback, right? In the first round. The then first round. Nobody, none in the second. Come back in the third. And then you told me Sam Howell's going to go in the fifth round. I wouldn't have bought that. that. That to me was the biggest surprise that the quarterbacks, I thought they might slide a little bit, but to not have one, only one go in the first round, none in the second, that was shocking to me. How about the biggest surprise, non-surprise for me? That was Kayvon Thibodeau going in the top five because the slide had been predicted for him for a long time. And if he doesn't go right here at two to Detroit, he's gonna slide out of the top 10. End up going five to the New York Giants and they really executed the draft well as Peter articulated. So biggest non-surprise to me, was Tavon Thibodeau. I think A.J. Brown being traded, you know, in a draft where there were so many great wide receivers early, the Eagles realized they weren't going to go up there and get one of those top four guys, whether it be Drake London or Olave or Wilson or Williams. So they took matters into their own hands. Like, okay, we will pay for that because we're still paying Jalen Hurts his second round quarterback money. They're going for it, the Eagles. They get Jordan Davis. And for A.J. Brown, who is such an important piece for the Tennessee Titans, who are contenders, they were the one seed in the AFC to trade away their number one wide receiver. I think that's a pretty shocking move. Right? And then they trade up to get Jordan Davis and have N'Kobe Dean with his medical question uh, drop all the way down to the third round. And I mean, when Gio, the podcaster, our yeah. friend was saying to Howie Roseman during the combine, for the love of God, get me a linebacker. Who'd have thought it would be Nicobe Dean in the third round? That's a pretty big surprise, right? Yeah, I think once the season ended, you would have said Nicobe Dean had a chance to be the first linebacker taken. So for that to happen, for him to fall, I think it's going to end up uh, hugely in the favor of the Philadelphia Eagles. And guys, I feel like the Georgia story is something you got to bring back again. Was it 15 Georgia Bulldogs got drafted? Most ever. Yeah. 15, Same. and then you talked about the guys who are transfers, Justin Fields in the class. You could stretch it to 18 if you want to yeah. that way, which is an amazing, amazing thing. But yeah, just so many different things that happen to this, a lot of dips and turns. And Peter said this before we ended, the quarterbacks, this is their opportunity to prove all the talent evaluators wrong, and they're gonna go in there, that type of a chip on their shoulder. I would dare say it'd be more like a boulder. And how about uh, the fact that Baker Mayfield is still a Brown and that it looks like the Carolina store is closed. Does that surprise you coming out of this draft that he didn't get moved, that a team that didn't take a quarterback didn't go ahead and get him during the draft and the Browns still have him? No, I don't, I don't know that I'm as surprised that Baker didn't get moved. I think I would probably echo what Peter said, more surprised that we saw a wide receiver get moved. Actually, two of them with Hollywood Brown as well. I, I thought that was too complex, too complicated with A.J. Brown get a new contract done in order to make that trade. That surprised me. With Baker Mayfield, you know, it seems like everybody wants to just wait this thing out. I don't know if they're waiting for him to get cut, thinking they're going to be able to get him on the cheap that way, but there's just been no rush to get anything done on that front. 
Last year was the summer of Aaron Rodgers. We would see him with Shailene Woodley out in Hawaii. I feel like this offseason is going to be the summer of where's Baker going? Where's Baker going? And we can't just force that to happen. That's going to happen when it's time to happen. We might be talking about this in May and maybe even June. Yeah, how about Howie Roseman? One last thing, the Philadelphia Eagles. Boy, did he go at it again. Aggressive, strong, made some big time moves. And we just talked about Nicobe Dean in the third round. That's like last year, Jeremiah Wusu Koromora. Should have been in the first round for the Browns. Ends up being in the second round. That's two first round picks that you get right there. Nicobe Dean's another first round pick. And owner Jeffrey Lurie, summer, summer of soul. That's an Oscar. Yes, so you add that on to it. So the Eagles oh, flying high. Very nice. So Kansas City is now on the clock. And we say goodbye to the first ever draft in Las Vegas where Wayne Newton made a pick and Michael Irvin kissed Donny Osmond on the head. <laughs> and the Blue Man Group invaded our set. It's Vegas. Back to you.